In this video, we will discuss magnetic force on currents, namely magnetic force on current carrying conductors. We will then discuss a few problems based on these concepts. Before we look at the magnetic force on a current carrying conductor, let's first recall the magnetic force on a moving charge. So if you have a moving charge, let's say a positive charge, with Q coulombs moving with some velocity V along the positive x-axis and this charge is moving in a region where magnetic field exists in that direction along the positive y-axis. We have seen in such a case the magnetic force on this charge is given by the following equation a cross product between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. What that means is, for a positive charge, when you apply the cross product rule to determine the direction of this magnetic force, namely, when you curl your right hand fingers from the velocity vector to the magnetic field vector, your thumb, your right hand thumb, would be pointing out of the plane. So that is the direction of this magnetic force. Also, since the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector is 90 degrees, the magnitude of this magnetic force is quite simply QVB because the angle is 90 degrees and sine 90 equals to 1. Let us generalize the above concepts to electric currents. After all, an electric current is quite simply motion of positive charges in a particular direction, say to the right with some velocity vector v. So let's assume you have a conductor and within the conductor there is an electric current going like that. The conductor, which has a length, let's say, L meter, is placed in a region where there exists a magnetic field going in that direction, namely in an upward direction. So the question is, what is the magnetic force exerted by this magnetic field on this conductor carrying that current? To do that, Let's look at a very small segment within that wire shaded in blue with length, let's say, little x. Let's assume for the moment that in this segment there are n charges per unit volume. Now that means if the cross-sectional area of this conductor is uniform and let's assume it is A, the number of charges within that blue region has got to be little n, the number of charge per unit volume, times the volume of that blue element, in this case A, the cross-sectional area, times the length of that blue element. So the total charge within that blue element is quite simply the total number of charges within that element times the strength of each charge in Coulomb. And let's assume all these charges are moving to the right with some drift velocity v. So we know the magnetic force on such charges is quite simply q v cross b. Substituting these two results in here we have magnetic force equals little n cross-sectional area, the length of that tiny element x, times the strength of single charge, times v cross b. However, we know n q v, which is the drift velocity, is quite simply the current density due to this motion of charges to the right. And let's write down this 
electric current density as j times some unit vector in that direction. Let's call it i hat. Note this i hat is different from that little i which is i that represents current. To avoid any confusion, let's rewrite the electric current with capital I. Substituting this result in here, we get the following equation for the magnetic force, namely J, the electric current density, the cross-sectional area, the length of that tiny element in blue, the unit vector I hat, cross the magnetic field. We also know that the product of electric current density and cross-sectional area is quite simply the electric current I. So the expression for the magnetic force simply becomes I x vector x cross into vector B. Note we have written x times I hat as quite simply the vector x, where the magnitude of that vector x is the length of that blue element and the direction of that vector x is the same as the direction of that current. In order to get the total magnetic force on this entire rod, we should sum up terms like these to cover the entire rod. And that would give us the following expression for the magnetic force on this entire length of conductor carrying a current I which is quite simply I, the vector L, cross magnetic field B. So the magnitude of this vector L is the length of this entire conductor, and the direction of this vector L is the same as the direction of the current. So that means the direction of this magnetic force can be determined by simply curling your right-hand fingers from vector L to vector B and you see the right hand thumb would be pointing out of this plane. So that is the direction of this magnetic force on this entire conductor. So to conclude, if you have a conductor at some a random orientation such as shown in this figure, carrying current in that direction, placed in a magnetic field in that direction, the magnetic force on this current carrying conductor is quite simply I L cross B. And the magnitude of this magnetic force is quite simply I L B sine alpha, where alpha is the angle between that length vector and the magnetic field vector, like that. And the direction in this case is, of course, according to the right hand rule, when you curl your right hand fingers from vector L to vector B, your right hand thumb will be pointing into the board as represented by this cross. Let's look at the following problem. A wire carries a current of 40 ampere. It is placed in a region where there is a magnetic field, a uniform magnetic field directed as shown in the figure. So those are the blue arrows. The magnitude of the magnetic field is 1.2 Tesla. Find the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on a 1 meter section of the wire. Let's first determine the magnitude of this magnetic force. It is given by the current, the electric current, times the length in question, which is 1 meter, the magnitude of the magnetic field, which we know, times the sine of the angle between the length factor and the magnetic field. In this case, the length vector goes like that, following the direction of the current, and the magnetic field is that, so the angle is quite simply 45 degrees that's given. Substituting the numbers, the current is 40, the length is 1 meter, the magnitude of the magnetic field is 1.2 tesla, and sine 45, sine 45 is 1 over square root 2 newtons, and that's going to give you about 34 newtons. Now what about the direction? The direction is represented by the cross product between the vector L, the length vector, which is going to the right, and the magnetic field, which is going that way. So both these vectors are on the same plane. 
Now as you use your right hand rule, you curl your fingers, your right hand fingers, from vector L to vector B, and you notice that the right hand thumb will be pointing out of the plane, like that. So if that is the x-axis and that is the y-axis, the direction out of the plane would be the z-axis. So the direction of this magnetic force is quite simply k hat. And in vector notation, we can quite simply write this magnetic force as 34 newtons in the direction of k hat. And that solves the problem. Problem 2. A wire carries a 7 ampere current along the positive x-axis direction, as represented by this figure. Find the force exerted on a 10 centimeter section of the wire by the following magnetic field given by that. So this magnetic field has the x component and the z component to it. So the best way to do this is by using the cross product rule in a determinant form. So the current is given by I vector L cross vector B. Now I is 7 ampere, so that's 7. Now let's write down the cross product in vector and determinant form like that. So vector L is pointing to the right. The magnitude is 10 cm, so it only has the x component. So 0 0.1, I have converted the cm into meter. The y component is 0, and the z component is also 0. Now the magnetic field. The x component is 0 0.2 tesla. It's right there. There is no y component. The z component is minus 0 0.3 tesla. So let's calculate this vector. So 7 ampere. Let's compute the i component. Cross out the i in two directions. You see that this number times this number is 0 minus that product is also 0. So it has no i component. Now what about the j component or the y component? We cross out the j hat in two mutually perpendicular direction. Now we note that there must be a minus in front of that j hat, which comes from the formula of cross product evaluated using the determinant method. So once you cross out the j, you see that this number times that number is minus 0 0.03 minus that product, which is quite simply 0. And finally, the k of the z component. So you cross that k out. This times this is 0 minus this times this is 0. So there is no k component either. So the final answer will be 0 0.21 newtons in the direction of j hat. So the magnitude of the force is 0 0.21 newtons and the direction is along the positive y-axis as represented by this unit vector j hat. And that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.